And now, the 3D printer that needs no introduction. The original Prusa MK3. Before we get started with anything about this printer, I'm going to go ahead and make this statement. This is currently the best 3D printer I have ever owned. I said it. I said it. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way first. The MK3 is a Cartesian style 3D printer with a 250 by 210 by 210 millimeter build volume. And from the top down, it has a new reworked spool holder. It has a direct drive extruder with Bontech gears. It has a genuine E3D all metal hot end, a part cooling fan, a Noctua hot end fan that's almost silent. It has filament runout detection as well as jam detection. It has an INC board that has TMC2130 stepper drivers on it that enables end stopless homing as well as crash detection. It also has a header for a Raspberry Pi 0W to enable Wi-Fi connectivity. It has an inductive probe that allows auto calibration and auto skew detection. It has a 24 volt power supply that allows for power off recovery. So if your power goes out while you're printing, you can restart from where you left off. It has a heated bed with a removable spring steel sheet this one has replaceable PEI sheets on both sides. It has a new reworked aluminum extrusion base frame that's a lot easier to put together than the previous version and a lot easier to calibrate. And I'm sure there's a lot of other features on this printer that I can't remember at this moment. Whew. Now the community has seen issues on the MK3 and maybe Prusa let it out into the wild just a little bit sooner than they should have. Things like under extrusion and some of the features not working so well have been reported. I ordered this printer as a kit in March 2018 and I received it eight weeks later in May 2018. As of right now, that lead time is under a week. And as always, I can only review the machine that I have received and on this printer, I haven't seen even one issue. Now rather than running down a list of all the things I like about the MK3, let's just show off some of the features that it has. Starting with the removable steel sheet, it's attached with magnets really tightly to the bed it's lined up with these two pogo pins here in the back. It comes right off. It flexes to release your part. And then it goes right back on. Now you might want to hit it with some alcohol before every print, but other than that, you're good to go. And if I didn't make it obvious before, yes, the MK3 has full auto bed leveling, and you're no longer limited to the nine spots like on the MK2. Since it has the spring steel sheet, it can level pretty much anywhere on the bed. Now, filament runout detection. So, you run out of filament, the printer will pause, it will go to its park location, it'll wait for you to press the knob to unload the filament, kicks the filament out the top, waits for you to remove that filament. Was the unload successful? Yes, it was. Insert the new filament. Filament will auto load. It will ask you if the change was successful and it was, we'll click yes, it gets back up to temp, and goes right back to printing where it left off. Now what about crash detection? What if your printer runs into something while it's in the middle of a print job? It senses the crash, stops, goes to home, it'll come back to the print right where it left off. What about power off or zoom? If I go kick the power strip off, printer shuts down, we turn the power back on, it'll automatically go back home, it will heat the extruder in the bed back up to temp, and go right back to printing where it left off. How quiet is this printer? Well, this is with the part cooling fan on. And if you think that's not quiet enough, you have an option in settings where you can turn it into stealth mode. It'll get even quieter. Do you hear that power supply clicking? That's the issue some people are talking about. Personally, not that big a deal. You also have a lot of the same features that you would have had on an MK2, like Live Z Adjust. That lets you get your first layer just right on the fly. Should the bed be incorrect anywhere, you can also add a little bit of correction. You can change SD card features, as well as see your statistics, your fail stats, and all your support info, which I find very handy. 
3.3.1 is the newest version of firmware. You can see your calibration details to see how far out of skew you are. And even the belt status to see if they're tensioned correctly. And to top it all off, I added the Raspberry Pi Zero to the back of the board to enable Wi-Fi connectivity with OctoPrint. I even have a dongle where I can add a camera. And as I stated before, all the features have worked really well for me. Now the MK3 implemented Linear Advance, and if you have the most recent version of Slick3R Prusa Edition, their default infill speed at a 0.2mm layer height is 200mm a second, and it really moves, and turns out a really nice print. Now what would you add to an MK3 to make it even better? Really the only thing that I could come up with was maybe a touchscreen and some fancy graphics, but one of our community members, Robot Hut, he took it even a step further. He decided to implement this very handy cup holder feature, as well as the kitchen sink as an SD card holder, because you know, that's about the only thing it doesn't have. All kidding aside, there's not a lot I can think of that I would change on this printer or that I don't like. There are a few newer revisions of the part cooling duct and the extruder body, but the print quality is so good now, I don't know why I'd change it. And speaking of print quality, how does this thing print? I printed out all three of the micro cities. They all came out pretty well. These are almost two day long prints. This one did break one of the top pieces, but other than that, it's flawless. I printed out this scaled up Triceratops head in this transparent sparkle blue filament. It came out amazing. The textures are great. I printed off a couple multicolored bender heads just to show how useful the filament sensor was. Had a little bit of orange left, a little bit of yellow, but then I switched to a full spool and finished it off. That's a very handy feature if you want to use the last little bits of your filament. And probably one of my favorite prints to date is this gold Adelinda that's been scaled up. It's kind of a transparent gold. You can see the infill through the wings. They almost look like veins. It's so thin and delicate. It came out really well. The finish is totally smooth. Amazing. Now to get the kit version of the MK3, it's going to set you back $750 US. The fully assembled version is $1,000 US. To get a 3D printer with this type of print quality and all these features, in my opinion, both versions are worth the money. Now if you get the kit version, it comes with a pretty nice assembly guide, all the tools you need to build it, and some gummy bears in case you need a snack along the way. There's also an online version of the manual that has any updates to the printer that might have got missed in the paper version, and some videos to help you with the trickier parts. If you get the kit, you only get a one-year warranty on the electronic parts. But Prusa does offer support 24 by 7 via their website chat, and I'm sure that they would be more than happy to help you resolve any issue that you have with your 3D printer. With all that said, should you run right out and buy yourself a Prusa MK3? Well, do you want a 3D printer that has a pretty good size build volume? It's fast, it's quiet, it's very consistent, and it has pretty much every feature that you could come to expect on a 3D printer in this day and age, then yes, go buy one, right now. I have not been in contact with Prusa Research on this printer or this review. It was bought with my own funds and all opinions expressed are my own. If you like this video or you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. And await. Oh, that was much easier.